Hey guys, and welcome back to My Lilac Hill. Brittany here with you today. And if you missed our last video, we are already planning for 2023 gardening season. And I went over all of the seed packets that I purchased this year um, that I plan on growing in my 2023 garden for my food garden. And I told you in that video that I would bring you back for another seed haul where I talk more about flowers, cut flowers, landscaping, and also just some flowers that I plan on using as um, like companion plants for my food garden. So that's what we're gonna do today. I don't wanna do too much talking here at the beginning. I just wanna get right into it because I do have several things I wanna talk about with these seed packets. But um, if you missed that last video, I will have it linked in the iCards for you. So let's go ahead and get into these seeds. Okay, so the first seed packet that I picked up is Dusty Miller. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. This I plan on using primarily in um, kind of like my landscaping beds and my containers. The reason I like this so much is my great grandmother grew Dusty Miller like all along the side of her front porch. And it just reminds me of her. Not only that, but her last name was Miller. And so it's just something that um, really reminds me of my great grandmother. And I wanted to grow that this year. So I went ahead and picked up some seeds. The next one is Cosmos. And I got these, um, I got the Dusty Miller from Botanical Interest as well, but I got these Cosmos from Botanical Interest on their big sale last summer. And I have never grown well, that's not entirely true. I've never purchased just Cosmo seeds to grow. Last year, I did order from Haas a um, bee pollinator mix, and there was some Cosmos in there, um, but I wanted a lot more. I think that they're so beautiful, and so I plan on growing quite a few of those. I also picked up some pansies. Um, these will mostly be for the containers that I have out on my patio. And I got a couple of different varieties of poppies. Poppies were also in that pollinator mix that I bought and I just fell in love with them. I'd never grown them before and I had never really, I knew what poppies were, but I didn't think I really liked them. But when I saw them start coming up last year, I just fell in love with them. So I got this black swan poppy. And this one is again from Botanical Interests. I also got this Hungarian blue poppy. Isn't that beautiful? It's Hungarian blue. That is also, most of these came from Botanical Interest um, or Haas. And then I got some Impatience. I primarily got these um, because they remind my boyfriend of his grandmother. And so I went ahead and got some to grow for him out at his house. And then I got some Columbine because I am really a big advocate of planting pollinator gardens. Last year, I planted um, kind of a big section right outside of my front door for my pollinator friends. And if you do any sort of gardening, you can kind of see there's a hummingbird enjoying that columbine. But if you do any sort of gardening, you know that pollinators are just so necessary. And so I really try to do my best job of bringing in different things that they would enjoy. Um, that way I can reap the benefits when I harvest. This is another kind of columbine that I purchased, Rocky Mountain Blue. And then speaking of pollinator friends, everybody knows our poor monarch butterflies are not doing so well. Um, and I have never grown milkweed, but I am trying a couple of different varieties. This one is showy milkweed and this one is hello yellow isn't that pretty and so monarch butterflies will only lay their eggs on milkweed or at least that's my understanding if i'm wrong correct me in the comments below but that's my understanding and so i want to make sure that i'm doing my part to help the population of monarch butterflies so that's why i'm growing milkweed this year and then one of my favorite, and a lot of people refer to this more as a weed, but I love morning glories. And yes, they can be invasive, but the way that I typically do them is in a couple of raised beds with an arch trellis across. Um, and I try my best to clean them out 
um, so that they don't just become a huge problem. If you're not careful with these, they can completely take over a garden, but they are just beautiful and the hummingbirds love them. I am really diving into cut flower gardening, not just because, or not at all because I wanna just sell cut flowers, but because last year I really enjoyed going out to my garden and cutting my zinnias and some of the flowers that were in that pollinator mix that I bought and some marigolds and just everything that I had in my garden and bringing it in and arranging a bouquet and setting that on my table. It just brought the garden inside and I loved it. So I am growing a lot of cut flowers next year and the majority of them will be zinnias because I just love them. So I got this cut and come again, which is just looks like a mixed kind of generic zinnia. I also got this cactus mix, which kind of zoom in so you can see a little better. How pretty are those? A little bit different um, style of zinnia. I've never grown those before, but I'm really looking forward to it. Last year I grew both of these. So the coral zinnia from Haas, as well as the Bannery Giant White, and they were my favorite. They got really tall and really big like a bush, and they are just full of blooms all summer long, and that was my favorite thing to put in my bouquet and bring in and set on my table. So I made sure to pick up another pack of both varieties of those, and I also did a lot of seed saving from those. So um, zinnias are really easy to save seed from, but also I left several out in the garden bed just to overwinter and drop seed and hopefully kind of naturally reseed themselves as well. But I like, I plan on having like thousands of zinnias because why not? Speaking of thousands of zinnias, we have another type of zinnia. This is the um, Bennery Giant Lime Zinnia. I've never grown this, but I thought in addition to the other varieties, but I thought with the coral, the white, and the lime, that would make a really fun um, kind of like springtime color arrangement. So I went ahead and picked those up. And then I made a little bit of a boo-boo. <laughs> I thought I was just getting one pack of the wine colored zinnia from Haas. And technically I did get one pack, but I ordered the 1000 seed pack so um, what I plan to do with this is obviously I'm gonna plant a lot of them because why not? Um, and I plan on doing some of that in my food garden to attract pollinators over to that side. Um, you'll see this more in the spring when I set my garden up, but my cut flowers are gonna be on one side of my house and my food garden is on the other. And so if I plant some flowers in that food garden, hopefully I'll have better pollination and things like that. But with this many seeds, um, and I'm not a cut flower producer, like I don't sell my cut flowers, um, at least not at this time. Um, what I'm gonna do is just share some of these seeds with a couple friends and my mom um, and let them grow some beautiful red flowers in their garden as well. And then I picked up some celosia. This is just a mixed variety from Haas. And these are great in arrangements, but they're also really great in containers. So that's kind of what I planned on using those for. I also got these Coreopsis. I've never grown Coreopsis, but I thought that those were just gorgeous flowers. Just really reminded me of like a summertime wild, like you'd find on the side of a road in the countryside, just kind of a really wild flower. And I really liked that. So I picked those up. And then I told you in my last video that I plan on really expanding my efforts in pretty much every avenue of gardening, but really in the herbal side of gardening. And so I wanted to pick up some calendula and I got this variety because it was so pretty. I also got the Prince Mix variety of calendula as well. And my goal is to make some teas and some salve out of the calendula that I grow. And then I wanted to add some height into my landscaping beds. So I went ahead and picked up some delphiniums and those are really 
three of my favorite colors. So I was really excited about that. And some Larkspur to add some different color and height as well. I also picked up some quinoa or quinoa. I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. I say quinoa, but I've heard it both ways. And I plan on using this in arrangements, um, but I've never grown this before. So I've got a little bit of research I need to do on seed starting and growing, but I'm super excited for those. The next kind I got is Bells of Ireland for arrangements. And I got those just because they were gorgeous. And I don't have any other flower besides the green zinnia, but that's slightly different, that has this much greenery to it. So I wanted to pick that up. I also got the cup and saucer vine. I plan on doing this on some of my trellises in the garden, but this is more for um, bringing in some pollinator friends. And then I wanted to add some more color into my arrangements. So I got a mix of hollyhock here. The next one is foxglove. I have never, most of, most of these flowers I've never grown. Um, I've grown a lot of um, nasturtiums and marigolds and um, morning glories and zinnias and that type of thing. But pretty much everything else in the flower world, I have not grown, especially from seed but not even really just in my container gardening. I, last year was really the first year I gained a, a big interest in that. And so this is just uh, an experiment for me. I don't have any expectations for this. Obviously I'm hoping for the best so that I can have some floral arrangements in my house and gift some to my friends and family as well. But I have always really loved foxglove. So I'm hoping I'm able to um, successfully grow those. And then as I was looking for foxglove, I came across lupines, which I had heard of, but um, I had never really paid much attention to. And I thought those were gorgeous. So I picked those up. Also picked up some um, things for filler in my arrangements. I got some Sweet William and some Yarrow. And then um, I have several other seeds for sunflowers that I had purchased last year and never got around to planting that I do plan on planting as well. But I got a package of these as a thank you when I placed my order with Botanical Interest. And they're supposed to be just a tall, kind of regular sunflower. Really excited about those. And along the same lines with sunflower, I picked these up from Haas. It's a Santa Fe sunset. And I thought that would just be a beautiful addition to a midsummer, late summer arrangement. And then for a little bit of drama, every floral arrangement needs some drama. I went ahead and picked up the chocolate cherry sunflower from Haas as well. So those are all of the new varieties of flower that I plan on growing in 2023. I say plan on because I have not done this much on the flower side of things ever. I've been doing a lot of research, um, but if you have any tips and tricks, um, those of you who have been doing this a lot longer than me, I would love to hear that. Definitely let me know those in the comments. But otherwise, I am super excited to get to work on planning where I'm gonna plant all of this and how much of each kind. I have kind of a, a process with gardening. Um, I start planning by just brain dumping on a piece of computer paper. And then I'll go out to my garden space and I'll actually measure and figure out, okay, is my brain dump going to work? And if my brain dump doesn't work, then I kind of hit the drawing board again. And I have like a multiple stage process and I change my mind two or three times before I actually decide what I'm gonna do. But if you are interested in seeing my process of planning out my garden space, definitely let me know. I'd be happy to do a video on that for you. Well guys, that wraps up my seed purchases as of yet for 2023. Again, I will probably order more seeds as we get into the new year, but so far this is what I've got. I'd love to hear what you plan on growing in 2023 as well. And I am gonna go ahead and get this all wrapped up so I can get these videos edited and out for you to enjoy. I wanted to thank you so much for watching. And again, if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And the best way that you can support me on my homestead is by sharing my videos on your social media. And I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on this for you guys, but I'll catch you in the next video.